This video is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Welcome to the revisit of the smartphone reviews where basically I just go back and talk about the phones that I reviewed back in 2023 and see whether or not I still use them or what's going on with them and just give you another small review of the phones going into 2024. Let's just get right into it. So first let's start with the S23 Ultra. So this is the phone that always sets the bar when every year smartphones come out, you have to try and top the S23 Ultra. And it's always definitely a tough, if not a losing battle. Cause Samsung always releases some of the best phones of the year, if not the best one of the year, right at the beginning of the year as well. So it's always hard to top it. From the hardware itself, this is a, not only a gorgeous looking device, but very durable as well. Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on both the back and on the front here. You have a armor aluminum frame. It overall feels pretty good in the hand, except for these corners. They're a bit sharp, but you know, a case definitely helps a little bit with protecting uh, not only the phone, adding a little bit of grip, but also softening those corners a bit, in my opinion. With the hardware, you do get your USB-C, your SIM card, and then you also get the S Pen available. Personally, I'm not a massive S Pen user, but it is available there if you want to use it for not only navigating, taking actual notes on a display, or you can use it with little gestures that you know, can be used for taking photos, for controlling YouTube or uh, media when you're listening to music. You can WAP as I think uh, Mr. Carter does. You can WAP across. Here you have some, you can see the actions that you have available when you're actually listening to media there. Uh, so it's pretty convenient, but I personally don't use it very often, if at all. Samsung also makes one of the best displays available out there. This display is insanely bright, colorful, gorgeous, smooth with the 120 hertz. It is a curved edge display, but personally, I'm not insanely bothered by it because when I use my case, it kind of protects it from any external touches on the screen itself. The display is also massive. As you can see, I believe it's a 6.7 inch display. So you're gonna get a massive box to box experience on this phone, which makes it great for the performance and the software. So with the performance, Snapdragon HN2 and then 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, I believe is amazing. This phone will just handle everything you throw at it from any kind of game, whether it be something simple or something a little bit more intensive, you're gonna be having a solid experience on here. And then everything from your streaming experience with the great display that you have here, the social media apps, so shopping apps, whatever you throw at this device, it'll be able to handle it like no problem. And the great thing is that it's also got an efficient chip with the Snapdragon HN2. So even though you may be pushing this thing to its absolute limits, usually it's able to keep its battery pretty amazing. Right now you're seeing some pretty inaccurate battery estimates because I haven't been using it uh, as a day-to-day -day phone for a couple of months now. So that's one thing that I do wanna try and reincorporate this into my cycle, into my rotation. and. Uh, Maybe once I finish reviewing the Pixel 8 Pro, I may come back to the S23 Ultra because this phone, it's just a solid package when it comes to performance and display, the hardware, everything that you have available here. It's just a top notch. But battery life, typically when I was using it on a day-to-day -day basis was about a day every day. As far as cameras, you're definitely getting one of the most versatile camera systems available on the market. You have an ultra wide, you have your wide, you have your 3x telephoto and then you have a 10x telephoto which does allow you to go up to a 100x digital zoom so you have the ability to zoom in pretty far if you wanted to so it's just overall a solid camera system and versatile system so even though yes the photos may look a little bit more exaggerated in their colors I think it's up to personal taste whatever you prefer is going to be up to you so as you can see some samples I'm throwing out for you right now I am more than satisfied with the camera experience on the S23 Ultra. And the S23 Ultra has also been super reliable when it comes to connecting to Wi-Fi, my Bluetooth, and mobile data, which actually brings me to today's video partner, Mint Mobile. If you haven't heard of them, well, let me tell you, with everything getting so expensive from housing, groceries, and just everyday stuff, including these smartphones, well, thankfully, Mint Mobile is here to help you save money on premium wireless. So Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month. And you don't have to sacrifice speed, data, or coverage because they're built on the largest 5G network. 
And Mint Mobile actually does all their business online. There's no physical retail store. So that's how they're able to keep things so low in the price because they don't actually have to spend their money on physical retail locations and hire physical salespeople to work those stores. So you're literally able to get yourself set up from the comfort of your home, whether it be through an eSIM or if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, then you can get yourself a physical SIM card shipped out to you for free. I've personally been a Mint Mobile customer for like two and a half or three years. I just recently got my email congratulating me for my Mint anniversary. So I've been a customer for a while and I've had nothing but a really good experience. I honestly don't notice a difference between my Wi-Fi and my data coverage or just my mobile network. I get good speeds, I get reliable connections. Anywhere I go from the west I've traveled on vacations and I live in the east. So I've had nothing but a good experience here in the US. And Mint Mobile also offers a modern family plan with as little as two lines. And in fact, my whole family is actually on Mint Mobile and they use one of those family plans. So not only am myself on Mint Mobile, but I got everyone in my household to switch over. So to make the switch to Mint and save big on your premium wireless, scan the QR code on the screen, or you can use the link down in the description, trymintmobile.com forward slash taco tech. It really does help out the channel when you use my links. So thank you. And let me know down in the comments if you made the switch. So the S13 Ultra in the end is still an amazing smartphone to get at the beginning of 2024. Even right now, filming not knowing what's going to happen with the S24 series, this S13 Ultra is still going to be a solid purchase, especially if you can get this on a good sale, like under $1,000, maybe talking $800 to $900 brand new or even used potentially for even cheaper. That's going to be an even better deal. It's still going to be a solid device that will last you for many, many years to come. So next I want to talk about the Nothing Phone 1. I actually haven't used this phone since the beginning of the year when I reviewed it. Uh, while it's a phone that I really want it to be a disruptor in the smartphone industry, same thing as the OnePlus was when it first initially began its rampage through the smartphone industry, I really want the Nothing series, the Nothing phones to do the same thing. And I'm, I know they definitely can. It's just not really it yet it's got its design it's glyph interface that you know at a first glance definitely catches your eye and makes you look at it and think wow that's a that's kind of unique but then you start using the phone itself and it just becomes kind of mediocre it's just a typical phone you're really not going to get anything super exciting in the hardware and the performance and the software it's all pretty pretty simple it gives you just a simple pixel experience as well there's a couple of differences in the way the aesthetics look of the interface itself um, but otherwise, it's pretty much like a Pixel, in my opinion, just in a little bit of a rebranding here and there. So performance and software is solid, but it's not anything crazy like any of these smart smartphones that are available here on the table. Uh, so personally, I haven't been using this phone in my rotation on a day-to-day -day basis either. Same thing as S23 Ultra. And I do use the phone for work, actually. So I have installed our mobile app as well as uh, our browser that we need to test our website. So I do use it just not for a day-to-day -day basis kind of experience. So camera-wise as well, I don't remember exactly what the camera experience was like. I can take a couple shots for you guys and you know, show you guys. Actually, I have some stuff saved here. Oh my Lord, who who or what the, who was that, bro? <laughs> um, but it's just been a while since I've used this device. And well, actually, these, these shots look not bad. They don't look too bad from what I'm seeing here. Simple, what more do you want? Oh yeah, these shots look simple. I'll, I'll throw these up and in, in, uh, as B-roll overlaid on, on top of the video here. So uh, you can decide on your own what you think of these cameras, but um, personally, I just haven't used them enough to, to give you a definite uh, rethought on these because it's been a while. But um, hopefully the camera system has improved a little bit. In fact, I think it just has an ultra wide as well as, yeah, ultra wide and then telephoto, or not telephoto, uh, wide. So ultra wide and wide lens. So that's what you get on these camera systems and for video you get 720p 1080p and 4k 4k 30 only and that's on both ultra wide and wide it looks like it so that's not terrible that's pretty good uh, for what you get and what you're paying for i don't know what the pricing is for this phone nowadays i think when i bought it it was around 300 dollars 300 to 400 dollars so mid-range pricing um uh, creeping up to fly our uh, mid-tier flagship or something like that but uh it's still an interesting device and I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs in the future. Uh, but the next generation's out and uh, it's a slight improvement on this phone. So uh, I haven't got my hands on it and probably won't get my hands on it anytime soon. It's because, like I said, it's not, there's nothing exciting about it other than the Glyph interface, which 
So it just doesn't draw, grab my attention at this moment. Now talking about the OnePlus 11, this is one of those phones, in my opinion, that was priced just right. You were getting a solid sleeper package, in my opinion, for I think it was $699 or $79 for this particular model, because this is the second tier model with 12 gigabytes of RAM and then 256 gigabytes of storage. And you got the Snapdragon HN2 in there. So you were getting a solid package, in my opinion, for the price that you were paying for the OnePlus 11. You got a solid hardware, in my opinion. It is a matte finish, but it's got a bit of a texture to it on the back glass here. That's why I personally like to use a case. And this is like the sandstone case, which I prefer. It feels a little bit rougher and a little bit more comfortable uh, compared to this feeling. I just don't like the way it feels. Um, you do have the mute switcher here, which allows you to put the phone in different modes, whether it be ring, you have vibrate, and then you also have silent. So you can easily control that with this physical toggle. In the hand, this phone feels really comfortable because of the softened edges, the curved edges, the softened and rounded corners here. It felt really good in the hand. One of the most comfortable phones you can get out there, especially once you add a case, it feels even more comfortable. Display is also pretty good. It's uh, a pretty decent display as far as quality goes. It's smooth as well with the 120 hertz. Brightness was not the best compared to the competition here. Definitely on the weaker side when it comes to brightness for this particular display, uh, but it still gets, gets the job done when you're outdoors. And of course, the OnePlus 12 apparently has a really good, sharp and bright display compared to this phone. So that's a good thing that they adjusted and uh, upgraded on the next generation. But this still does the job in my opinion. It is a little bit on the slimmer side, which also adds again to how it feels in the hand. Um, so compared to these other phones, it just is a little bit slimmer when it comes to the width of the display. The display itself is also a curved edge display and something I do like that OnePlus kindly does every single year it seems it feels like uh, is that they actually include a plastic screen protector. It's starting to peel off a little bit at the top corner here uh, but you at least get something to protect your display from small little scratches. So the actual display itself is probably pristine right now and I'm just going to keep that plastic screen protector on because I personally am not bothered by it. And I, like I mentioned the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with 12 gigabytes of RAM on this device that's what made this phone such a good phone for the price. You were getting a solid phone for performance. So if you wanted the best performance for the buck, you had to get the OnePlus 11 this year because it was such a solid buy for the performance, for playing games, for just your everyday activities. You were going to have a solid experience on this device. The software is running Oxygen OS. I believe at this point I'm on 14, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Auction OS 14, which is uh, kind of like a reskin or a rebrand of, I think, Color OS. Um, so you get a decent amount of customization and different features available here. Uh, it pretty much matches kind of one UI in some things. I think the only thing that's missing right now on Auction OS is lock screen customization. That's one of the last things that it's missing. So everyone has the same generic lock screen. Uh, so you can't really customize it or change it much. The other thing that's a bit of an Achilles heel on this smartphone is it's going to be its camera. It's not the best camera system out there. It's definitely okay and good, just not the best. You got your ultra wide, you got your wide, and you get your telephoto, which is only a 2x optical telephoto. So everything else going forward is digital. So it's not the sharpest once you start to get you know, past 5x. It's definitely starting to lose a bit of its quality. And especially once you get the video, video is also a struggle on this smartphone because once you get the 4K, it doesn't actually use the telephoto at all. It only uses the ultra wide and wide lens. If you want to use the telephoto, you have to go down to 1080p. Even though you do have 8K, but the 8K is only at 24 frames per second and it's only on the wide lens. The front camera is also one of its, definitely one of its weakest links. It, it's for one, for video, capped out at 1080p, as you can see there, 1080p, 30 frames per second. And the photo quality, it's, it's also, I, I think it's the way it's processing the photos as far as like the color. It's not my favorite. It's not the best looking in my opinion. So as far as the front camera, it's definitely, like I said, it's weakest link. And just the back cameras as well, definitely not the best available out there. It, it's okay. It gets the job done for someone who doesn't really care about cameras much, but for those who do, you're not going to really love this camera system in my opinion. Battery life is also really good on this phone because of the Snapdragon Agent 2 and because of just the optimization that it has. It's overall really good for battery life, similar as the S23 Ultra was. I typically got a day, sometimes even a day and a half with the smartphone with, I don't know, somewhere around three, five, maybe sometimes six or seven hours of screen on time. So uh, I think this phone's battery life was really good as well.
So as far as getting this phone, I personally would recommend it as long as you get it at a really good sale. Again, just because of the OnePlus 12, it's improving on pretty much everything that this OnePlus 11 already did really well. So OnePlus 12 probably is the way to go if you can. If not, I still think this is a good viable option when it comes to a good smartphone in 2024. Now talking about the Z Fold 5, this is one of the most fun phones you can buy going into 2024. If you want something that's new, fun, but expensive, then the Z Fold 5 is the phone for you. If you're a multitasking beast, this is just the phone to get, man. It is not, this can get better than the Z Fold 5. The OnePlus Open looks intriguing as well, especially with its multitasking capabilities, but I've seen a lot of like quality control and just quality issues with the screens cracking and just displays going out that I'm still sticking with my Samsung for now because of the, I would say overall good quality and uh, good durability because I'm, I've had the Z Fold 3, I've had the Z Fold 4, and I haven't had the display crack on me at all. And the actual hardware outside of the phone, I think it's pretty similar to the rest of these phones out here. I believe it's this Corning Grill Glass Victus 2, uh, same thing as the front glass here. And then you have your armor aluminum frame on the outside. I did crack. Uh, the lens on the phone here during one of my videos. I was doing a drop test for a uh, case that I did a review for it and it ended up uh, not protecting the phone as well as I hoped it did. Uh, so it caused the lens here to crack a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, there you go. Someone can see it. It's uh, got a bit of a little hairline scratch there. Very minor and it doesn't actually affect the actual camera quality, which is good. Uh, but still a disappointment uh, and I can't really say I can blame Samsung for that just because I dropped it a couple of times <laughs> so it's surviving that many drops and finally cracking on the last drop uh, was pretty good and the fact that only that cracked is also a pretty good thing so small little scuff here and there but other than that it's still holding up pretty well and the most important thing is that of course that display on the inside is still alive it's still living it's still going and it's also the hinge itself is still going strong as well. I do feel like it's slightly, slightly, just ever so slightly not opening up fully on its own. It's, I feel like it's got a little bit of a bent maybe. Maybe it's just my eyes deceiving me, but it feels like there's a little bit of a bent, but honestly, it still feels pretty much flat. And it's not making crackling sounds yet. I hear small sounds here and there, um, but otherwise it's, well, it's not as bad or it's not as bad as it was on my Z Flip 4. Uh, and Z Fold 3 as well, because those had those like crackling sounds when you were unlocking it or opening it up. Uh, but the experience is solid on the Z Fold 5. Like I said, if you're a multitasking beast, you got to get the Z Fold 5. From being able to just open up two completely apps, pretty much two apps here, side by side and browse, watch YouTube, and then drag a third app if you want to. I don't know. Let's look at, let's go to the internet. Just drag and drop and you're pretty much good to go here as you're able to just multitask like a beast. I think one of the best things you could do is maybe watch a YouTube video and then also play a game. So here we have my video. So let's just watch myself, I guess. Click on a video, drag. Let's see, go to all my apps here and let's pick <laughs> GTA. Let's go play some GTA. You can play some GTA at the bottom and then watch a video at the top. Like how, where, else can you do this I, i'll wait i mean i guess the one plus 11 i guess the z4 or i guess the pixel fold or or the huawei fold or whatever but uh i'll wait patiently for you to tell me that the experience is really good so um i personally think this is one of the best experiences when it comes to multitasking because of the smartphone and on top of that you also have the ability to use something called flex mode so if you are just watching a video so for example again a youtube video here you can prop your phone up as its own little kickstand watch the video at the top and just have I don't know, you could do something else at the bottom if you wanted to and control the media here with these little pre-built-in uh, media controls at the bottom. But I think it's pretty cool because it, it allows you to not have to worry about having a kickstand on the case itself or trying to prop your phone up somewhere else. You just literally flex it, set it up, and you're good to go. So again, this phone adds a new way of using your smartphone and it's just a fun experience. It's definitely tough to get into it at first, especially if you're used to a slab phone, a single display phone. It's tough to get into it uh, because you don't have a good compromise between a skinny candy bar 
thin display and then a wider and bigger display. So like the biggest thing for me is definitely typing. If you're typing here, it's a bit tougher when you have a big keyboard and then also definitely much tougher when you have a smaller keyboard. So it's definitely one of those things that you have to get used to and build new habits. Camera quality, you're getting a top-notch camera system in my opinion. Uh, it's overall solid for the average person that you need. Like it gets the job done. You get a good front-facing camera on the front here. The camera on the inside, it's still an under display camera, but personally, I don't use it ever. Like this is, I believe, an example shot from it, if I'm not mistaken. Now this one is, ah, look, that's, that's pretty rough if you ask me. You can see all the fuzziness, no detail on my little mustache does, does, that does not exist. Um, it, it's just not the best. Uh, it's just there for facial recognition. Um, and oh, one thing too is that this does have a built in fingerprint sensor on the power button, which is really nice. It's super fast and reliable. All you gotta do is just lightly touch it and it just gets you right in with no problems. All these other phones use a ultrasonic or a uh, optical fingerprint sensor built into the display. And while the ultrasonic is pretty good, uh, this does not compete with the built in fingerprint sensor. Battery life is also pretty decent. It's not as good as the Snapdragon HN2 on just a regular phone like the S23 Ultra and the OnePlus 11. But on the folding phone, if you're using the display on the inside all the time, of course, it's a bigger display, so it's drawing a little bit more power. Uh, even then, I still feel like it gets the job done for, I would say, 16 to 20 hours of total usage. Uh, so usually I do have to charge about once a day. Um, but other than that, it's still a good solid experience. Plus it has a smaller battery as well. So obviously I still think the Z Fold 5 is still a solid buy going into 2024. One of the best foldables available out there, if not the best foldable available out there, uh, depending again on what you look for in a foldable or in a smartphone. I still think the Z Fold 5 is a solid buy. So not talking about the iPhone, this is actually the last phone I reviewed. In fact, the review just went up today as of the recording of this video on Friday the 15th of December. So it's still kind of raw to talk about this right now. My opinions aren't really different from since I reviewed it. I still think it's a really, really good phone. I love the new titanium look and finish. I think it looks really good and also feels really nice. Those softened edges feel really comfortable in the hand and lighter phone feels really good but it's just the software <laughs> it's the software that's not my favorite it's got a really good display except for that notch I, or the pill cutout dynamic island it's not my favorite even though it is useful for when you're listening to music here i just don't think it's otherwise necessary to have it it could just be something that you implement this into here which you already do actually on i think about it uh, but otherwise, it's a really good phone, but it's just not a phone for me. It's not a phone that I really want to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Reliable, yes. Powerful, yes. Snappy, great. All that stuff. It's a really good phone overall. And some of the new things that they've added, like the action button, I was excited to use it. But personally, again, I just find myself not using it often, only because of the placement. I feel like it's a little bit too high up, but it's definitely useful. One of those things that if you program it correctly to use it with shortcuts, I feel like it becomes a very useful feature. I also really like that they added USB-C. Don't get me wrong. I love that. The universal cable for all of these smartphones here is excellent. Uh, it's just uh, something that I'm used to now and I'm happy with. I'm, I definitely like that. Uh, it's just still, even though it has USB-C, it's a software. <laughs> I come back to that software. Uh, it's not my favorite. Mainly, the reason why, why I say it's the software is just the customization, especially the home screen stuff. The home screen customization is super limiting that it's where you spend most of your time. It's how you set it up, how you access your apps and whatnot. So being, not being able to customize it as much as the Android devices, it's kind of frustrating to me. Battery life is also really good on the iPhone 50 Pro Max. I think I got roughly 24 at minimum hours of, of total usage with this phone. So every day I only had to charge whenever I had to charge. Uh, every day was a different time. Sometimes I would charge in the morning, sometimes I had to charge in the afternoon, um, but it wouldn't be until the next day. So I could make this phone last me a day to a day and a half. So battery life is really good. And the camera system is also really solid. They added the telephoto 5X on the Pro Max here. So being able to zoom into 5X optical and up to a 25x digital zoom is very convenient in my opinion. It was definitely missing a better 
uh, telephoto compared to the competition here uh, with the iPhone. So being able to have that now is really good. You also get solid video, one of the best smartphones to get for video. If you want the best video quality possible on a smartphone, you could use this phone as your day-to-day -day phone and then also use it for content creation, whether it be for YouTube or for home videos, for vlogs, for whatever you want to do with it. It's a solid package for both front video and also the back video. It's such a solid phone when it comes to the video. It, it's one of those things that I personally look at as, can you just use it and not worry about the additional stuff? Like, yes, you have ProRes Log here, which allows you to get a little bit more color out of your videos when you color grade them and stuff like that. But personally, I don't use it. I tried the color grade and it didn't come out too good. So in the review, if you've seen the review, I don't even talk about it much or even show off the ProRes log because I personally am not qualified enough to really show it off to its capabilities and talk about it much since I didn't really use it too much. So it's there, but personally, I don't care for it too much. I just like the default settings and like to know that if I just point and shoot, will I get a good video? Will I get a good photo? And I can be rest assured knowing that the iPhone definitely will do that. One of the things that I like as well is that you're able to capture deaf information now with your selfies or if you're just taking a photo of someone or even a pet. I like that because you can just give the phone to someone and just say, take a couple photos for me, please. And then once you get the phone back, you can easily just go in and automatically turn on the portrait mode in post without having to worry about asking the person who's taking a photo to put it into portrait mode because you want a couple portrait mode shots. So here, just take a couple normal photos and then go back into your photo app, add the portrait mode and post, which is very cool. Uh, but with that being said, that's pretty much of the iPhone. You can see the review. It's still, like I said, raw. My opinions are still the same. It's a really, really good phone. It's just not my favorite software experience. So that's why I don't use it on a day-to-day -day basis and why I'm actually switched to a different phone currently. And that phone is the Pixel 8 Pro. So I've been using this phone on a day-to-day -day basis for at least a little over a month now. So I'm getting ready to get my review written and done and made for you guys. But as of right now, the Pixel 8 Pro is what I'm currently using as my day-to-day -day smartphone. So there is no review out yet. There is a Pixel 8 Pro versus Pixel 7 Pro video out there. Um, and right now I can tell you that I am impressed with the improvements on the Pixel 8 Pro. The Pixel 7 Pro, was pretty good. This, I wanna say it's great. It, it's definitely a great smartphone and still not up to par in performance with these other smartphones, but I still think it gets the job done. I do have complaints with the software. It's just with the Pixel Launcher, there's a couple of things that I wish they would do differently or wish they would allow you to do that something like the S23 Ultra allows you to do, but it's still a solid overall experience in my opinion. So I'm not gonna go too in depth, but I'll tell you that the phone, it, it's been rocking. It's been rocking good. It's got a good hardware build to it too. I love how it feels in the hand. It reminds me a lot to, I wanna say the iPhone in a way, it's just a little bit more soft and off. So the soft corners, the soft edges feels very comfortable in the hand. And adding this particular case specifically, makes it even more comfortable. I, I highly recommend this case. I love the way it makes the blue a little bit darker, but also adds not only MagSafe magnetic there for whenever you're wirelessly charging, but also a nice kickstand here to be able to prop it up horizontally for videos, but also vertically for maybe a phone call or something. It's very convenient in my experience. The display itself has been phenomenal as well, not only in the quality, but also the brightness. It's such a bright display, but also that it's flat, so I can install a tempered glass screen protector now, so it makes it easy to protect it from small little scratches. The camera system, in my opinion, is really good. I am personally really impressed with the video so far. I actually shot a couple of B-roll shots for my video for the TickWatch Pro review. So, if you guys saw that video, there's a couple shots in there that I filmed with the Pixel 8 Pro because it just looks good. It looks natural. It doesn't look exaggerated. And now that you have the video boost with the latest feature drop of December, uh, I believe I do have that. Let's see if I go to video here, go to settings, video boost right over here. So you have the ability to now use video boost at least as of, at least I am here in the US from the December feature drop. Personally, I haven't tried it out yet, but I might give it a go before I make my review to see what it's all about. But 
I'm impressed with this phone so far. The camera system, the camera quality, the video, the performance, solid, gets the job done. Software, simple, but yet it gets the job done. So it's overall becoming that phone that might be the default for a lot of people when it comes to what phone should I get on the Android side when I'm coming from iPhone. I would say this, this is definitely a contender, if not the first phone to try out when you're an iPhone user and wanna try out Android. So with that being said, that's gonna be the end of the smartphone review recaps. So here we have all the phones that you know came out this year as well that I reviewed. So let me know your guys' thoughts on all these smartphones and your favorite smartphones and what phone you have right now. And drop that all down in the comments. Let me know what you guys are feeling, thinking, and want to see in the future as well on this channel. So hope you guys enjoy. Thank you all for a great 2023. I look forward to making more videos for you guys and uh, providing you all the info that you need to make the right decision for purchasing your next smartphone. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.